Just like in the real firearms community, airsoft is filled with attachments, thousands of them. Optics, grips, different stocks, handguards, and so on. You know what I'm getting at. But just like how there's a whole list of attachments that are relatively useless for airsoft, there's a whole bunch more that really make a firefight easier to get through. You can use any of these attachments on just about any gun and just be a little bit more equipped than your opponent or they just might give you a little bit more confidence. And just a while ago, I put a list of five of the most useless airsoft attachments, so let's see five of the more useful ones. And hopefully after this countdown, you'll have a better idea of what you should pick up for your current build, your next build, or what to look out for when going up against anyone with any of these attachments. I've gathered info from dozens of airsofters, store owners, distribution representatives, and this is what I've established thanks to Airsoft GI who makes so many trips possible so I can film and study the game of Airsoft. And of course, G&G Armament, who have a lot of new stuff on the way to the market, like this very strange but easy to fall in love with 9mm AK called the PRK9. And maybe if this list gets 5,000 likes in a day, then I just might give this one away. So go ahead and make that happen. But let's go ahead and discuss why out of the hundreds of attachments that you can buy, I chose to put slings at the fifth spot. This placement is fairly simple. Some of these guns just get really heavy, especially when some events can last three to seven or even 24 hours. I just really wouldn't expect any heavy gunners to not at least put their primaries down for a while to get a break. You'll normally see these on anything from M249s, M60s, 240 Bravos, and less commonly on standard rifles and SMGs. Even players acting as snipers and designated marksmen tend to use slings on either their rifles or smaller rapid deploy weapons like MP5Ks, compact M4s, or maybe a machine pistol. Some players use their slings to complete the look that they want, and some use their slings for their intended purposes. To throw your primary off to the side of your body, pull your sidearm, and run into a CQC predicament, or to just let your replicas hang there to relieve a little bit of stress. You won't see these on many tournament guns due to the fast-paced nature of speed QB, but as for weekend skirmishes and lengthy events, the sling can definitely be your best friend. Next up at number four is a bit of a controversial one because it's something that can drastically change how your primary or even how your secondary can be used. But it does make just about anything more compatible with what your teammates might be using. And it is one of the more popular attachments for competitive airsofters. It's the magazine adapter. More specifically, I'm gonna talk about the M4 magazine adapter. From shotguns to pistols like high kappas, the M4 magazine adapter cuts out the problem of finding expensive or hard to find magazines. It makes shotgun reloads so much faster and less clumbersome, and it makes guns like the P90 look really ugly. I will admit that these things break the immersion factor too much for a lot of players. Some people will even think of you very negatively for using one of these adapters, but you gain a lot of advantages by using one. Now I would never, never put an adapter on my Tokumari Spas 12, but if I didn't care, that would make reloads pretty quick and I'd have a lot more rounds available since these shells only hold 30 rounds. But we have M4 midcaps now that contain over 200 rounds, and that's the major advantage that I was talking about. Now a lot of times, you'll need an HPA tap or an adapter with this setup, so it's not a quick on and off piece. These adapters can also put on a lot of bulk, so there's that too. It's gotta suck somewhere, so there you go. However, if your whole team is running M4 magazines in a competition, then go right ahead and hook up your pistol or your shotgun with one of these. Or if you're using a P90 or maybe a G36, then this is an option for you. Heck, there's even 3D printed MP5 magazine adapters that go right onto AUGs. Just please promise me that you don't go and ruin anything like a Garand or a G3. Please, have at least some dignity. All right. Next up is something that I almost never use personally. After all, I only have a single sight. Sights. Magnified or not, that's what's at the third spot. And this spot holder is probably gonna have people saying they're useless and others saying they're essential. A dot will always be easier on the eyes than iron sights and sniper rifles just about mandate them. And if you're using a full face mask like a dye mask, well, you're probably gonna want a riser mount to go with your sight most definitely, but I would be naive if I said that we don't trace our VVs most of the time when we're playing airsoft. 
You can't lie here. You definitely do this. You see exactly where your BBs are going. Most of us don't even use our iron sights on our airsoft guns, so of course that means that most people don't properly use magnified sights. You can spend anywhere from fifty to five thousand dollars on a sight if you want to. Brain Exploder has a whole video where he explains why he buys much more expensive real optics for his airsoft replicas. So go watch that if you want more information on why someone would do such a thing. But optics like red dots are some of the most useful attachments for quick and clear target acquisition. Anything that makes shots easier to make is welcome, especially at longer ranges. Just be sure to actually use your sights or else it just might as well be on this list. Oh, and am I the only one who wants to really put an EOTech on a Rafika, by the way? I know it looks absolutely ridiculous, but that's kind of the point. A major tip that would give anyone looking into getting a sight is to get something to protect it because, yes, BBs can shatter these sights. So as ugly as they might seem, you should either get one of these little plastic shields or get a hold of some Lexan. Then cut out a piece of it that'll fit on the front facing glass and secure it in place with some glue of some sort. That way, you'll save your investment from being shattered like so many do. Now for the top two attachments that go pretty hand in hand with each other, and using both, turn CQB games from easy mode to slutty easy mode. Major bonus points to anyone who knows where that quote is from. At the runner up spot is the flashlight. This is a staple attachment that anyone can make use of. If you're a mill simmer, you use flashlights to see in dark areas and to distract enemies for a moment to quickly take them out. And if you're a CQB player, you'll mostly use flashlights to see exactly where your BBs are going in close to medium engagements. There's a lot of great choices of flashlights or torches you can decide from, or rifles, pistols, SMGs, and even combo lights that are built onto grips. Asking Gun Gamers Eric, he said, a quality flashlight is important so you can illuminate rooms and targets of priority in the dark. I'm not such a fan of the tracer or blinding elements of flashlights as I am of the practical aspect of visibility when you need it to identify targets. When you have teammates without night vision, it can be especially useful to highlight targets to concentrate fire. You can use a flashlight as a tracer illuminator, as a signal, as a distraction, it has many uses. You can even use them to just make your gun look a lot better. And the attachment in the notable mention category can do that too, but with more of a bang. I'm adding this just in case something on this list isn't to your liking. So how about the under barrel grenade launcher? How useful is that? Well, they'll add a lot of weight to the front of your barrel. They can sometimes cost more than the rifle you're putting them on, shells can be expensive, and one of the shells, being the shower shell, is one of the most useless things in airsoft. The range with shower shells is terrible. They eat up a lot of gas, and some people will get pretty pissed off if you shoot them with one of these in CQB. However, Tristan, I know you're watching this, you do make it look really funny when you get a kill with one of these in CQB but grenade launchers are very useful in games and at events when vehicles are in play, or when you need to clear out a room of enemies that would otherwise immediately take you out if you just walk around the corner or through the door. Just like how you use a noob tube to take out a camper in Call of Duty, you can do the same for airsoft and very effectively. The shells you use with any launcher play a major factor of how useful you can be. Again, using a shower shell to take out enemies 200 feet away, that will make you look like a complete clown but throw in a tag and explosive round and they'll probably run for it. You can use a 40 mic by Airsoft Innovations to destroy vegetation that a player might be hiding behind, or you can use an empty shell filled with only gas and add a foam filled projectile inside of the noob tube to launch it straight into a vehicle to wipe it out. But just about every event and every field has different rules for launchers. But are these useful for Speaky B or other fast paced competition games? No, not really, and I believe they're banned most of the time from competition in the first place. Are they useful in CQB? Meh, only if you want to get a quick laugh or use your shower shells. It's a situational attachment, but you'll be grateful to the person who uses one of these to take out the group of enemies that were keeping you pinned, or that technical that's been laying the hate all day. For the top spot, I have something I've touched on before. And it's what most people said was the most useful and important attachment Airsoft has ever seen. It's the Tracer Unit. Probably the most effective thing I see in just about every arena. An attachment that makes hit identification so easy, 
And it's just so damn nice to see glow-in-the-dark BBs just streak across the sky in night games. Now in the useless attachments list, I pissed off a lot of people when I said that suppressors are the most useless airsoft attachment. I think something was lost in translation, because never did I think that trace units or suppressors that are used to cover extended inner barrels were useless. Foam filled suppressors are also very useful on spring powered guns, some AEGs, and non blowback guns, like the Token Marie Mark 23. Tracer units, however, still reign supreme, in my opinion, as the most useful attachment in all of Airsoft. In my opinion, tracer units are important because they allow you to track your BBs in low light environments without needing to use a flashlight, and they also make having a suppressor on your gun useful instead of it just being for looks. Asking a good friend named Demo, who is a part of the successful SpeakyB team SYG, he said, I personally use mine for indoor CQB, night games, and even loading red tracer BBs in first, followed up by green ones to use as a visual low mag indicator. You'll need to get tracer BBs to make this attachment worth anything, but once you use a tracer unit at a night game or in a CQB arena, it's going to be hard to go back. And it's going to be really hard for anyone to argue with you when you get a hit when using a tracer unit. After all, they only let you exactly see where your BBs go. You will add a little length to the end of your barrel, and gas blowback pistols require a lightweight unit, or else you'll really hurt your performance of your gun, so keep that in mind. Then finally, I'd really recommend even experimenting with what you can put a tracer unit into. As an example, Trung the Maker can add one right into his guns because he's a pretty big brain person, and some people can slip them right into suppressors that they already have, combining them with foam to make for a quiet tracer unit. There are so many ways that you can make this and every attachment on this list work for you, so try them all out. And if you haven't already, then check out any of the gameplay videos that you can find on the US Airsoft channel if you need some more inspiration. This rounds off my second part episode for attachments, and I'm pretty happy with what I've said. I still have gameplay to drop, and three other countdowns I want to put together. Five airsoft vehicles, five custom video game airsoft guns, and five more amazing customs so keep an eye out for all of that. Also, if you haven't yet, then go ahead and give this video a like, which really helps me out, or ask me whatever you have on your mind in the comments. And like I said, if we can make 5,000 likes in a day, then I just might give away this PRK9. I probably will. But I want to thank everyone who helped me out with this countdown. I want to thank Airsoft GI and GNG who made it possible. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Holmbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.